Greetings, YouTube. I read a blog post yesterday on the Slacktivist um, site, uh, a site that I highly recommend. I will post a link to the uh, to the posting down in the info bar. And it deals with the fact that the U.S. Constitution does not, in fact, mention God or Christianity at all. And that during the period in the 18th century when the Constitution was being formed, voted on, and was eventually ratified, it was seen as a glaring omission that the idea that a government could be secular, could not have a religious component, specifically a Christian religious component, was viewed as a truly radical idea. And in the 18th century, it was a truly radical idea. It put forth the concept that a plurality of religions was acceptable, that all religions would essentially have an even playing field, where no one religious sect would have predominance over any others. And it was fought against by uh, zealot theists in the 18th century, and it's been fought repeatedly since then. But in the 18th century, it was a radically new idea. People were afraid that a government that did not have a religious component would undermine the very foundation of society itself, that it could not hold, that it would fly apart at the first instance, first stresses, um, and that such a nation would be doomed to fail. But we've had over 200 years now, and we've done pretty good. We've survived a civil war. We've survived world wars. We've survived attacks both domestic and foreign. And yet we are still here. So when I hear that there are theists out there that want to put God back in the Constitution, um, first of all, it makes me think that they didn't never read the document because he was never there to begin with, or she, depends on how you want to look at it and that we've functioned pretty nicely without a deity in the Constitution, that we don't need a divine being in our government's structure. And the fear seems to be that unless there is a specific sect that says, hey, you're in charge, that somehow the other guy will take over. That if some particular religion, in this case Christianity, though, I've never been able to figure out which branch of Christianity would be the proper one to be established in the United States. Uh, it being a democracy, I guess in theory it would be the one that was the most popular. But it seems to be, feel, be the feeling that unless a particular sect plants its flag firmly in the heart of the nation, that someone else might plant their flag in the heart of the nation. And yet, our government's secular position is that no one is allowed to plant a flag in the heart of the nation. That all the people can hold their own flags and wave them as much as they want. And there's no one religious flag that's viewed as being more important or less important than any other. And that the heart of the nation is allowed to continue beating on its own a secular godless constitution. And that's the way it's worked very successfully for over 200 years. So when I hear people tell me that, you know, well, this is a Christian nation. Well, it wasn't founded as one. It was founded, founded as a secular nation. Now, Christianity may be the most popular faith in America. And um, as I mentioned in the past, 78% of Americans self-identity identify as Christian though I as I also said mostly non-denominational they don't particularly say they belong to any branch of the faith interestingly um, the, the Slacktivists uh, blog posting mentions that at the heart of the Baptist Baptist faith not Southern Baptist but Baptist the very idea that the government would be involved in all in a, a religion is an anthemum. It it's actually runs completely counter to the, the Baptist uh, religious views that there you must have an independent church. 
that the separation of church and state, state is the best possible situation for both church and state. And of course it is. Um, so the next time someone tells you that they think that they need to have religion back in school or government or where have you, remind them that the Constitution was written specifically as a document that didn't have a religious component. That 18th century individuals saw around them everywhere they looked what happened when religion was in government and they wanted something better. So they fought for it and they won. And we've got 200 years of success to show that they were right.